Dave shared last week, the purpose of the church is to proclaim the message of Jesus. But in doing that, we have to have goals and visions in order for each one of our ministries to accomplish that goal. We have to have a desire. We have to have a passion. Paul, when he was writing in writing to Timothy, when Timothy was preaching in Ephesus, he told him in, in 1 Timothy chapter, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, he said, here's what you need to do. You're a young guy, and, and the older men, the stronger men within the church are trying to tell you not to do something. And he said this, I need you to do something. I need you to stir up within you the gifts and the passion that God has given to you. Stir them up. In other words, don't let anybody douse the flame that God has given to you in your heart. And I'm at the age now within my ministry about what God has called me to do. I get to do some unique things. And some of the things I get to do now is, is I get to minister to other churches. I get to go into other churches' ministries and, and interview their staff and interview their, their pastors and their organization and their deacons and, and try to find out exactly what they're doing. And many of the questions are, why are we dying? Why are we declining? Why is our attendance going away? Why is there no passion within the church? And I looked at some of those churches and I got to write the reports and I get to talk to them about their ministries. But then I started thinking about, well, that's what we need to do at our church. What is it that we need to have? What is it that we need to instill within our congregation? The fire in our belly, just like Paul told Timothy, don't let that go out. How do we do that? We have to do that because we have a passion and a love for people. And if we do not have that passion and love for people, if we do not communicate that this church is a church full of grace, full of love, full of diversity, then what we are doing is we're saying this church is for a unique individual, for us and us alone. But if we have an open door, an open heart, a mindset that we are going to try to be the church that God wants us to be. Two weeks ago, I shared with you the idea that we had as I was talking to some pastors in Dallas at a pastor's conference about, about their issues within their church, the problems that they had. And at the end of the sermon, I tried to tell you that uh, it would be awesome if our church, the size of our church, that we would maintain the mindset that our church was a 20 or a 30 or a 40 member church. We need to have the ministries and we need to have the passion. We need to have the abilities of the church. But our mindset must be that if anyone walks in those doors, if we invite any person within these doors, they are struggling, they are hurting, they're going through a divorce. They have problems within their life. And somehow God brought that person at this place at this time for this church to minister to them. We should have a holy excitement. We should do whatever it takes for the body of Christ to get to know that individual. And we share our lives with them. Not just enjoy church. Not just enjoy the music. But what is it? What is it that they're going through? Why is it that they're here at this time? And if we have a church of the our size... When we walk in the doors and we see somebody, we should have no problem walking up to them. Even embarrassed that we don't know who they are and stick out our hand and say, I love you. Can I pray with you? Can I identify with you? Can I introduce you to somebody? And no one in this church should ever sit in this church by themselves because this is not a place of sitting. This is a place of serving. We ought to get into their lives and minister to them. And the goal that we have within the body of our church is that we grow through relationships. We grow through community. We grow because God has given to us the ability and the resources so when somebody does walk in those doors, we can minister to them, we can love them, and then we can share with them the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. If all we are doing is sharing Jesus but not showing them love. They may hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they are not going to be connected to the person and to the body of Christ. We have to communicate the truth, but we have to give out that truth in our eyes, in our hearts, and in our lives. This church is very unique. This church is unique for a few reasons. When I would say, do you know everybody within the church? I have a deacon board, and I'm going to, I have a chairman of the deacon board. Where's he at? Steve Hoover. Uh, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit, Steve. We were sitting at the deacon board meeting last week, and we were talking about the church, and, and we were so, talking about some individuals in a positive way about ministry, and uh, not negative. We're talking positive. And I said, you know who that is? 
And I said, Steve, how long have you been in this church? He goes, oh, for, you know, he's like 70 years old. Probably he's been here for like 30 years old, or 30 years or so. He goes, I don't know them. And then someone on the other day goes, I don't know them. I don't know them. Because here's our issue. We enjoy church, but we are not a family. So let's call it the way it is. What we must do, if we are going to grow as a church, we must become community and family. So when we do grow, we can look at each other's faces and know their names and understand who they are and love them and minister to them and get into people's lives. Our church is good, but our church needs to be great. And how do we become great is we become community. We need to know what the youth department's doing. We need to know what the music ministry's doing. We have to have a drama department. We have to understand that the nursery is growing by leaps and bounds. What are we going to do about it? And get into people's lives and own the church because we love the people that, brought, that God has brought us to this body. We have to do that. Vision has a way of ignoring those things and those people that say it can't be done. We have to have an audacious goal, vision of saying this church is was established in 1956. It has been, it's had many pastors and dreams and goals and accomplishments and salvations and baptisms. And we can say thank God for everything that God has allowed this church to have in the past. And we can say thank you for that. Thank you for what you have done. But at this time, at this moment, we have to lock the door to the successes of the past. And we have to open the door to the dreams of the future. So many churches are dying, decaying, and dead because they look behind them and they're in awe of what they did. So they're afraid to go where they need to go. So we love the past. We thank God for the past. We have sacrificed for the past. We have built great things in the past. But today is a brand new day. A generation is upon us that cannot look in the past and say, that was good. They're looking at me and they're looking at the church and they're saying, what do you have? And we have to have the power and the vision of God to move into the future, to have something radically for them. We are looking at a unique generation that does not care what we did. They care about what we are doing. They care about the authenticity of the genuine faith of Jesus Christ. It's not about going to church. It's not about singing songs. What the generation is coming up, they want to see are the people in this church, the leaders in this church, the, the, the ministers of this church, the members of this church. Do they have an authentic, genuine faith and walk with Christ? And I believe the future church when they walk into the doors and they see the body of Christ, when they see that we are genuinely real and open and walk with Christ, not just sing about him, not talk about him, but we genuinely have a faith of Christ. That's what it's going to, Paul said, imitate me. We must imitate those that have a faith in Christ. We must know where we're going and what we're doing. We must be unified. We must be unified in the direction of the church. And the direction of the church, as we shared last night, it's all about Jesus. It has to be about Christ. It can't be about anything else other than Christ. And if we are unified under that Jesus is the change agent for their life, for their family, and for the church, we can be positive in that mindset. I love what Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says. Finally, brethren, whatsoever true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things is just, whatsoever things are pure, what things are lovely, whatsoever things are commendable, if there is anything in excellence, if there's anything praiseworthy, think about these things. When we think about our church, I want our church to be a positive expression of love that when somebody walks in the doors, they know that when they go to Glenville, they are going to see Christ, they're going to be loved by Christ, they're going to understand that they may not have all the answers, but Jesus Christ is alive, and Jesus Christ worked within their life, and the power of God is upon that church. Now, the power of God is alive on that church because you are the body of Christ. We are the church, and if we are alive in Christ, and we have a positive influence, and we are unified to the working of Jesus Christ, that and that alone is going to bring the power of God upon this church through the working of the Holy Spirit. It is the body of Christ. It has to be unified. We have to know what we're doing. We can't be splintered. 
We can't say, I don't want to do this and I don't want to do this. We have to say, this is what God wants us to do and have a pure vision and direction of how God is going to accomplish that goal. So how do we do that? What we do not evaluate will stagnate. What we do not look at, what we do not communicate. What you do not know, you will not do. So here's what we're going to do. I've, I've invited our staff and I've asked all the staff to come up and they're going to share with you uh, two or three minutes in Rachel's case, five or six, who knows, but two or three minutes of, <laughs> of, of their goals, their vision. Because I truly believe you have put into place a team. This church does not, and it does not grow because of Bruce Thomas. This church grows because of God's power, and he has empowered the team whether it's the staff or whether it's the deacons or whether it's the leaders within the church. But we need to know where we're going. You need to know what you're sacrificing with. We need to know your monies and the tithes that you give to this church. How is it impacting our community? What are we doing with what God has given to us? So I've asked our staff to come up and they're going to share about their vision and their goals for the upcoming year. If I would, just have them come up and you feel free to just take over. There you go. I guess I drew the short stick, so. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ben Ludwig. Um, me and Rachel, Rachel's going to talk about the nursery, but um, she's uh, with me in the ministry of the youth group, too. We've been in there for about three or four years, and uh, really our vision hasn't changed. Our vision is the same um, as when we started as it is today, and uh, that's essentially just to speak into the hearts and the minds of young people, and that's been our, our passion and our opportunity for, for a while now, so. Sorry, just, I don't know why. I always get so nervous talking in front of you guys, but I, I gotta, I just gotta take a breath. But anyway, um, uh, so a, a goal that we have is that every student that comes in, that we get to uh, walk through our doors, that they feel um, wanted, that they feel like somebody um, uh, is gonna engage them, that's gonna talk to them. And, um, but more importantly, that we can lay a firm a biblical foundation for them that they can take on through the rest of their life, that they can apply to their lives. And uh, just some things that uh, we're excited about coming up in the, in the future is uh, Rachel's done a girls' conference. And, uh, man, jeez. Oh. I'm all right. I'll shake it off. I'm wasting my time. I only got two minutes. So anyway, um, <laughs> I got it. So uh, Rachel's doing a girls' conference, and she did it last year, and uh, it had a lot of success. So she's doing it again in 2015. But um, we're going to need a lot of prayer from you guys just to, uh, to see because Rachel gets a, an opportunity to reach, I think it's a few hundred, right? Um, it's a lot of girls. It's over 100 girls that, that come here, and they pack out in this room right here. And um, it's girls that don't necessarily always come to Glenville. So she's got this uh, rare opportunity to reach girls outside of Glenville, girls that maybe never have the chance to go to church, girls that maybe never have the chance um, to walk through these doors and hear about Jesus Christ. So um, we're excited for that in 2015. And um, somebody brought it to my attention, hey, why don't you do anything for the guys? Why don't you do a guys conference? And so we're going to try that in 2015. We're not calling it a guys conference. We're going to call it something more manly or something like... Uh, live in the woods for a week or something like that. I don't know. But we're, we're going to hope to grow them spiritually uh, on top of, you know, having fun and, and just hanging out and getting away from the distractions of the world. But um, that's, that's something that, that we're going to try that, that's kind of new and, and that uh, we're, we're absolutely going to need your partnership and prayer with on that. So um, we're just excited what God's doing in the hearts of our, uh, of our young people. And, and they're getting hungry. Um, one quick story. I know I don't have any of this time, but I, I love surveys, okay? And so in 2013, 2014, I passed out a survey, and the number one resounding thing our youth group wanted was uh, more snacks and comfier chairs, okay? 2015, I gave them another survey just to kind of show you the progression of what we're dealing with is that I didn't have a single survey come back to me that said they wanted snacks or chairs. The number one thing they wanted me to know was that they loved their worship music and that they wanted less fluff in the service so that they could have more time to learn about God. So absolutely, give them a hand. So we're just excited to see the growth and just to see what God's going to do with the youth group in 2015. Thanks. Now, they made jokes about me talking long. That was kind of a long time um, this morning, I'm going to just talk to you guys for a few minutes about the nursery. We have some really exciting things going on, but I wanted to share um, a verse that kind of goes with our vision for this year, and it's Luke 18, 16, and it just says, but Jesus called them to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for theirs is such or for such of, is the kingdom of God. Sorry. 
So basically, we have been growing tremendously back in the nursery over the past couple of years. Um, we have a new computer system, which I know all of you love so much. But basically, it also allows me to track who's coming, who's going, when we have first-time visitors, when they're coming back. And it kind of lets me just check our progression when I can't always be back there. And so over the last year and a half, we've had over 250 children come through our nursery ministry from babies up to our preschool room which is tremendous. Um, we've had a huge baby growth this past year. We had about nine babies at one time, tiny babies that need to be held and fed and rocked. And we just grew so quickly um, about a year ago with those children. So as we've done that, we have then had to expand with our our volunteers, and by the way, if any of you are wanting to volunteer, we would love to have some more of you because we need um, at least five of you in case anyone's feeling that right now. But um, we have grown, and so we've had to then expand. And Pastor's going to talk a little bit to you um, later on in the service about our vision for the nursery this upcoming year. Because of the growth of our children, we're needing some more space. We're needing some more volunteers. We're needing just to make that ministry um bigger because we are getting bigger. And so we're really excited about that. I had a great meeting yesterday with a lot of my volunteers and just really encouraging to see their excitement to be with your children and to love on them and to teach them. And then hopefully that we are then continuing to grow and move on. So I look forward to sharing that vision with you um, later on today and down the road. And then just looking forward to, again, your participation as far as praying for our ministry, serving in our ministry, um, giving and helping sometimes with your time or different things that we're doing. So we really um, just thank you for helping us along and just for loving on our kids, for those of you who are in there with us. I don't know if they're clapping for me or clapping because of what you just said. A recurring theme that I'm going to go ahead and add to as well, the, the, what Ben said and what Rachel said is growing, and we are growing. And so I'm going to give you some numbers how, uh, how we're doing in our kids' department too. And it, it is just going up. And, you know, just from the first of the year, first of this year, in our 930 uh, classes that we have for preschoolers and for the older kids, we started out the year averaging about 30, and now we're over 40. And that's pretty awesome in, in one month time period that we've grown that much. And that's just in our 930 class. Our 11 o'clock, we started out in January with around 50 kids, and that's preschool and kids church combined and now we're up to 80 so and God is really bringing the kids to us and it's really exciting because every week I know in Big City Studio every week we have four to five brand new kids that have never been here before every single week so it is just awesome to see new families coming in with these kids that we've never met and it's really great to have the opportunity to minister to them and and like I think it was Ben that said you know our vision has not changed at all we're not we're not changing what we're doing we're 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 not changing the fact that we love love these kids and we the thing we want to do the most with them is show them the love of Jesus and and we're going to, we're changing ways of doing that but the foundation is the same. We love them, and we love having new kids come in here that we're able to witness to, and also the ones that have been here for a long time. It's really awesome that they, you guys keep bringing them. Um, some of the things that we're doing, also on Wednesday nights with our WANA program and our preteen program, we're averaging um, 80 kids between the two programs, and that is growing too. Our goal there is to hit 100 on Wednesday nights, and what's neat about that is of those 80 kids, there's probably, I don't know the exact number, but I'm guessing about 20 or so that don't even go to church here at Glenville. They're kids that are brought here because they hear about our program and they want to be a part of it. And that's awesome that we get that opportunity as well to reach out not only to those kids, but to also the families that are, that are bringing them. And we're hoping and praying that they'll come on Sunday morning and see what we have to offer the whole family. So our plan for 2015, for Kids Church specifically, we, are, we want to implement an interactive, character-based Kids Church that's going to utilize actors that will bring Bible characters to life and they will interact with actors of the modern day. And that's kind of a new direction we want to go, but in, in order to get there, we need a lot of volunteers, people who love to act, people that just love kids, that want to come in, be a part of a skit, and then you can come in here and be a part of church. You won't, wouldn't miss much. And it, So if you're interested in doing that, it's going to require quite a few volunteers to pull that off, but it's going to be amazing. The kids are going to love it. They're going to get so much more out of it when, when they see these Bible characters actually come to life. It's kind of like Night at the Museum, you know, when the lights, when everybody's gone, the Bible characters are going to come to life. And that's kind of the, the theme we're going for. And we, we think that through that, we'll be able to reach them even even more um, for, for, you know, 
for them to open up their Bibles and actually see that it is alive. It's going to be really cool. So if you want to be involved in that. Another exciting thing we got going on, we're going to a brand new camp this summer. The kids loved Hiawatha. We've been going there for years. Kids have really enjoyed it. But the one thing that they say about going to camp at Hiawatha is, man, it doesn't feel like it's camp because it's in Wichita. We don't get to get away from our parents near far enough. So we went out, me and the Dodges, we went out and we found a camp out in the middle of nowhere. It's a town called Harveyville, Kansas. I've lived in Kansas all my life, never even heard of it. Has anybody heard of Harveyville? Harveyville. See, nobody. It's, it's like a Twilight Zone town. But they have a really, they built this guy, this family um, built this camp, and it's really awesome. It's an amazing camp. It's only two hours away. So we're going to go there this summer, get the kids a little further away, make them really feel like they're camping. We're going to be in the middle of the woods, but we also have air conditioning, which is always a priority. So I want to encourage you, you're going to be getting some information about that because we, we need help with that too because it's a week-long thing and it's away from home and, and if we, it's a great ministry opportunity and so many kids come to know the Lord through camp. Last thing, and then I'll give it to, my, to uh, Justin because I've been talking way longer than two minutes, is we're getting ready to kick off our 12th season of Upward Soccer. We've got 6,000 soccer brochures that are going out to kids this year or this month. So we're praying that we, last year we had 300 kids on 38 soccer teams. We're praying we can get at least 10% more this year because that's 10% more that get to hear about the Word of God. And then, so we're just praying for that too. And that requires a, another huge amount of volunteers. So if you want to be involved in any of the stuff that I've mentioned, then just come see me and I will get you plugged in and we will have an awesome time. I was talking with the pastor, and he's like, you might just share your heart a little bit. Uh, as far as uh, being a part of the music ministry, worship music ministry, drama ministry, I can say um, there's been seasons, and I don't know if you can relate to this, but there's been seasons in my life where making a melody in my heart to the Lord doesn't come very easily. And uh, as, when you talk about vision, you talk about things— you know, some, you look at Isaiah in chapter 6, and you look at John in Revelation, and you look at when they actually went before the throne of God, that once they saw him, they were kind of undone, and they got to a place of, uh, of reverence where, where God touched their hearts in such a way that, that they realized that they're, they don't have it all together. And uh, so it's been pretty interesting over the last few months. I think the Lord's been distinctly speaking to me about having that eternal perspective, and I, and I hope and pray that that is the vision for the music ministry is that we continue to have an eternal perspective that we will get to stand and and honor the Lord before his throne forever and ever um, and as we do get together the thing that has been a blessing for me and I know for Cassie and, and for I can uh, somewhat speak for some of the band members because they've told me but the actual time of fellowship that we get to have when we're together the time of prayer that we have the time in God's Word, and just the time to worship together. I find it an awesome privilege. Um, you know, Psalm chapter 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on it he meditates day and night. And it goes on this long discourse of how awesome it is to be righteous and, and to walk in the ways of the Lord and to meditate upon him. And then it says how terrible it is for the wicked because they can't even stand in the judgment. So, you know, when I think about how, how Christ has forgiven me, it's easy to operate out of the overflow. Uh, we, we, we are enjoying having more people involved with the music ministry. We are enjoying seeing the different facets of it, even with the youth. We're enjoying even some of the outreaches with the, the young people and trying to bring up the next generation of, of worshipers that will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And it's just a joy to be a part of that ministry. Um, but I think it, it kind of boils down to the fact that we're going to be able to do this forever. Not just to live for him, but to sing. And if you don't sing now, you're going to be able to sing. If you don't play now, you're going to have an instrument. And, and that's something that I think God's been sparking a passion. And, and it can be some, there can be some times where you go through seasons. But I'm just thankful to be a part of this ministry in this season. I'm excited about where we're going. I'm excited about involving more people and um, just appreciate your prayers uh, because we definitely have seen this been a, a refining time for us in a good way and but also um, just 
in that sense, we, we want to have God's hand upon the ministry of music that we can be uplifting, not distracting, encouraging, incorporating the age and wisdom, and also incorporating the youth and the vitality and bringing that all into balance. So I appreciate your prayers and your support as we move forward. Good morning. I'm Leslie Thomas, and I represent our ladies ministry. And this week I was thinking about um, the goals that I would like to see for our ladies. And uh, one is spiritual growth, and two is fellowship with one another, and three is mentoring or ministering to one another. And in our spiritual growth, I would encourage and I would love to see all of our ladies be a part of our cell groups. Um, they're in people's homes. I know that we have Jill Whitmore that does uh, Bible study during the week with our ladies. I have one at 9.30 on Sunday. So there's so many opportunities to um, just have an in-depth Bible study and also fellowship. And it's to provide opportunities for women to develop new friendships and strengthen your ex existing ones. We have so many opportunities to get to know one another. And one of the specific goals that I have, and Bruce kind of touched the, on this a little bit this morning, is I would like for our ladies to get to know each other, their first names. I went home from church Wednesday night, and I was so embarrassed because I called a lady the wrong name all Wednesday night. And I got home, and I, was, I felt so bad. So if she's here today, I'm sorry, and I'm glad you came back. But, uh, you know, it is. Look around you. I mean, it is hard to get to know people sometimes on Sunday morning. But when you make yourself available to come to our activities, um, I'm just excited when people come and I get to new, meet new people. Um, and I have four pages, but the words are this big, so don't worry. Um, mentoring and ministering. And this models after Titus 2, 3 through 5, let the older women train the younger women. And I'm not the older yet. I think I'm right in the middle. But when I think of this verse, I, I just think of someone's always maybe a few steps behind you. And they really need for you to put your hand behind you and to pull them up beside you. And... I don't know about you, but I look forward, and there's always someone I need that's two or three steps ahead of me, and I want them to pull me up beside them. I feel so blessed because I'm a pastor's wife, but you know what? Things are not always wonderful in my life. I live with three guys, so that within itself, no, they are great, but you know, I have my own personal struggles, and just to know that when I come on Sunday morning or any time, I can pick up that phone and I know that I have somebody there for me that will listen and will to help, help me so much. You know what? You may, be, you may have been hurt, but you've allowed God to heal that hurt. And then now you're going to be a blessing to somebody that may be going through the same hurt that you are. Um, and this all ties into participating in our ladies' activities. You're able to connect with ladies. Um, through different areas. And I just want to give a shout out to all of our wonderful ladies ministries that are already taking place. We have Brooke Erskine, who takes care of our soul food ministry. And she is awesome. I have texted her at 11 o'clock at night and said, you know, Mr. Smith's in the hospital. And she's like, okay, on it. I'll get it taken care of. Just give me their, their name and address. So she, she's wonderful. So if you ever know of someone in the church that is in the hospital, please let us know. It does not bother us at all for you to text us or just let us know. And then, Brooke, I thank you for just, that has been a blessing to me and I know to so many people. Also, we have our Mom to Mom and um, Shanda Integren heads up this ministry and it's a great ministry for moms that have young children. There's free childcare. That's always wonderful. And they have a Bible study and there's activities that they do. So that's been a, a great um, outreach and inreach for our church. And then just we have so many activities just going on throughout the year. We have Ladies Spring Social and I have five wonderful ladies that are you know, taking up the leadership with that. And we have a Women of Faith overnight trip and uh, that's inspired great speakers and wonderful music. Um, you know what, some of our activities are just fun. I mean, I don't know about you, but I sometimes, some weeks I work 45, 50 hours a week. I wanna get out, I'm tired, but I get excited about just spending time with 
my church friends. And, you know, I'm so glad seriousness does not connect to spirituality because I know God wants us to have a merry heart. It does good like a medicine. Sometimes I need a lot of that medicine. So um, on, on a closing note, here's a, a way you can help serve this month. We're having a cookie stroll. And this always helps to raise money for our ladies' ministry, for women of faith, or just if we're short a little bit here and there. And so all we ask is that you sign up to bake cookies or to bring a baked good, or if you would like to sign up to help. We're going to have the cookie stroll after the, morning, the first service and after the second service. And um, just see me in the back if you would like to sign up for that. Really appreciate it. It's two weeks from today. Well, I think we're all going to be in trouble because we're going over our two-minute limit here. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. Um, anyways, uh, like all the other ministries, uh, community groups is growing. Glenville is uh, experiencing growth, which is always a great thing. God has really just been blessing us and pouring us his blessings down on Glenville, which has been awesome. Uh, Glenville Church uh, has a brand new ministry, and that's community groups. We started this back in September. And uh, when we started it, we started with 10 groups, and we had 85 adults join up. And they met um, throughout the city uh, on different nights of the week. And um, that's just like, it's an awesome to say that. I'm so excited that we've been able to have that much involvement. And one of the other things that these groups did throughout, this, um, throughout the last semester that I'm really proud of is they participated in um, 20 city initiative projects. Now, city initiative projects, like, well, what is that? Well, that's an opportunity for our groups to just love on our, their community, love in their city, and just love people and uh, serve, the, serve the city and serve their communities. Um, so they, they serve these, and what that looks like is um, each group got to decide what they were going to do and, and what they were going to serve, and they range from um, helping the homeless uh, youth and teens that are in the Hayesville. We had a group serve them. We had groups that made care packages and went to the critical units, uh, intensive care units in the hospitals, and just uh, loved on those families. And we had groups that just went to nursing homes and just uh, spent some time with them and ministered to the people in the nursing homes. So it, it ranges from all different types of service, but they just showed Christ's love to our city and their local communities. And we had over 20 of these that met last semester in the last four months. And uh, this semester, we're going to be taking that momentum. We're going to be uh, pushing that into and doing a, uh, an Easter project where all the groups are going to get together. And um, you, if you're in a group, you're hearing about this for the first time. But it's going to be really exciting. And what we're going to do is we're going to be loving Glenville's neighbors. Um, I think it's really important for us to love our neighbor like Christ told us to do. And so we're going to be trying to minister and serve our neighbors by uh, just going out and canvassing all the neighborhoods and inviting them all to church, uh, inviting them all to Easter, and figuring out how we can just um, be a better neighbor to our neighbors here in the Glenville area, Hayesville and Derby and things like that on the south side of Wichita. We really want to minister to them. So that's something that we're going to be do as a group. Uh, all of our tr groups are going to get together and do that as well as their normal city initiative projects as well. So that's a great ministry that we have coming up. Another thing that we're doing to keep this short and sweet is um, we're continuing to do our groups and we're having these Bible studies. And so... What I want to recommend or what I am really excited about and my goal is for this ministry is that we can get more people to get involved in the ministry. We only have 85, like I said, and I would love to see, uh, my goal is by the end of this year or this time next year when I'm back up here on stage, that I can say that we've had 120 people, current church members, join up and are currently actively involved in the ministry and on the ministry team of community groups. I also want to be able to say that 30 visitors or 30 couples uh, who have become future church members have also joined, that we've been able to be evangelistic in nature. We've been able to go out into our local areas and invite people into their groups and minister to them so that they have come to know the Lord and they've been able to join up. So that's our goal. That's what we're reaching for and striving for is that people will come to know the love of Christ and uh, that they'll be able to do that in the center. And I also want to say, if you haven't had an opportunity to join a community group, you should do that today. Um, I know there's a lot of things like time. Uh, there's a concern of, you know, that you're just tired from the week or you're worried about your kids and daycare. Well, bring your kids along because in every group throughout the city, we've got uh, daycare provided or we've got some kind of way we can help, with you, help you with your kids. And then also, this is going to be that hour out of the week. You might be exhausted, you might be tired, and you might be busy. But this is going to be that hour out of the week where you're going to be able to make some new friends. You're going to be able to spend some time with people. And it'll become an hour of rest for you guys. It'll become an hour where you can be encouraged. And it'll help you face 
face the difficulties of life that, that's going to be coming your way, uh, that comes everyone's way. And so they'll be able to have friends and people around that will be able to help encourage you and uh, just keep you um, focused on Christ in those troubles and times. So uh, I, I, on, I ask that um, you guys get involved in that ministry. And plus, one more thing I want to add is that... Um, when you're in a community group, you get to minister to people, and you get to see God use you and f new friends and old friends, and that's exciting. You get to be a part of that, and uh, you get to take that plunge and, um, and minister to people. So I encourage you guys to do that as you join our new ministry here at Community Groups at Glenville. Well, I'm very fortunate that I get to work with a bunch of people like this, young minds. Uh, most of my friends, old guys, they're out drinking coffee at the coffee shop and talking about what the price of wheat and who died last night. And I really like this type of ministry, being keeping my mind so freight. But I do have a first-class ministry here at Glenville. And I know we're running short of time, so I just want to give them to you. The first one is what we call first impression. And that has to do with our connection team. We meet them at the door. We bring them in. And we're working on that. We'd like to have a real nice six-passenger a golf cart, electric golf cart, so we can start it out in the parking lot, bring them in when it's cold, rainy. So if you have a little extra money laying around, see me. I'll tell you exactly what we're looking for. But uh, we had 270-some uh, visitors last year. But we believe that we ought to not only meet them out here at the door, we need to bring them on in here, and that's where everybody can be involved. Shake their hand, as Pastor mentioned. Let them know that you love them first impression connection team. I also have what I call first step connection point. It's a brand new class. We just started last September. We've had about 12 people involved in it. It's new people coming into our church. We have a four-week class where we can talk to them about what this church is about. And uh, we feel like that we are losing too many people. They don't stay. We can't funnel them into the children's ministry, the youth ministry, music, whatever it is. And uh, we need to start keeping the people that's visiting. So we want to um, bring them in, let them know what our church is about. And then I have what I call our first base discipleship class. Uh, we've had 120 people go through a discipleship class since we started six years ago. We continue to do that. We do one-on-one -on -one discipleship now. Uh, probably this coming fall, we'll have another classroom discipleship class. And so we're looking forward to growing this year, and I think God's going to do a great job. Thank you, all a bunch of preachers here all want to talk a lot. That's good. <laughs> well, I, I know that we ran a little late on time, but I do want to share a few things that uh, I believe is the goal of our church for the future. If you have... Um, sacrificed for this church. If you believe this church is the place that you trust for your spiritual health and your growth, then the things I'm going to talk about is very important to you because it's the passion, what drives this church. And I truly believe that if we put these things into place, I believe that the whole goal, the whole identity of this church is going to just swell into a, a beautiful picture of God's grace and God's love. I just listed a few. The first, I believe, is in evangelism. I believe it is our God-ordained responsibility to share our faith, not just in church. But I believe every one of us should have a desire within our soul to communicate the love and the forgiveness that Jesus Christ has given to you. If we have that built-in desire not to be the preacher not to get up and beat somebody over the head with the Bible, but just to be the Christian that you are supposed to be seven days a week will breed evangelism because that's what Christ did for you. Do not escape the gift that God has given to you. The gift that God has given to you is the freedom of forgiveness, the call upon your life to share your faith. Evangelism has to be at the high priority. It doesn't do us any good to have church and to talk about the great things that God is doing, to talk about a facility that we can take care of the kids and we can do with the nursery and have a facility to take care of church family because we're going to heaven. Our goal 
as a church is to bring non-believers that have no faith in Christ into our house so we can mentor them, love them, and they could reproduce themselves in others. If we do not have that mindset, we become stagnated. We become dead. And sooner or later, drop off the face of the earth because we've become of no effect. We have to have evangelism within our soul. And then, uh, this is a, a one that I believe is very important to us. Uh, and I think it, it adds flavor to our service. We are wanting to develop this year a, a, a drama team. And in developing this drama team of, of multiple drama casts, we would like to start having drama classes. And having drama classes on a particular night and having everyone that would like to be involved in the drama to set in, to learn, and to start casting and start working on different dramas. So if you say, I really don't have a drama bone in my body, well, the person in charge of drama is full of drama. So she will be able to teach you and work with you and how to teach uh, different dramas. So Bonnie Bunch is our drama director, and she is going to start this new ministry it's not new as far as drama, but it's new because we're starting classes and working on multiple dramas. So if you would like to start working in the drama area, please contact uh, Bonnie, uh, Bonnie Bunch. So Bonnie, would you please raise your hand? That's who she is. Everybody knows who Bonnie is. Okay. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of phone calls um, every week from different men within the church. And uh, these men within the church are, are they all have issues. Men are goofed up. All the women say, amen. <laughs> but we're goofed up because we have you. So it has, you cause the goof up. So that's all, that's all I'm going to say. But uh, I am working presently with a, a group of men. And we want to make a men's ministry not about an individual. We want to make the men's ministry about the men of the church. And in doing that, we want to build a team of men that can fuel men's love for God and for the family. So we are currently, I have, uh, Tim, I'll even mention, Tim and I have uh, been communicating uh, deeply about how to develop a men's ministry that meets the needs of all of our men. Because it's really unique. Men's, we've tried four or five or six different ways to do men's ministry. And some of, some of the things are very successful. Some of the things are not very successful. So what I need to call our men to do is, is this. Just like in all these other ministries, if we want something to succeed, guess what we have to do? We have to get involved. We have to say, this is what I want. This is what needs to be done. We can't allow ministries to be unsuccessful because maybe you don't like necessarily one of the things that they've done. What we have to do is we have to say, the overall mindset of ministry is a priority. How can I pick it and how can I choose and how can I serve in that area. So uh, men's ministry is one thing this year that we are setting a goal and trying to establish and work into a men's ministry. Now our nursery is a project that uh, is going to be the, the facility project of 2015. Our nursery has moved by leaps and bounds as it was 20 years ago. Uh, Tammy and Larry Page were in charge of the nursery and they updated it big time about five years ago. And they brought it up to a whole different level than what it was previous to that. At this time, our nursery ministry has uh, blown its doors off as far as kids in there and facilities in there. We've had to move the Awana's office from away from the nursery area to another office because we have to expand our nursery and to add more classes in doing that. But in doing that, what we're going to do is this year, we are going to give our nursery a brand new remodel facelift. When we walk into that nursery, uh, when I, when, let me tell you, when I bring people into the church and, and uh, they take a tour of the facility, they can tell that in 1956, that was the building that was built for the church because it was the oldest part of the church. And it looks like the oldest part of the church. And I believe that we have, with our resources in-house, with the resources that we're going to gain, I believe that we will be able to have a total remodel of that nursery with paint, with a little bit of sheetrock, with a little bit of electricity, with a little bit of, of ductwork, and we can make that thing look like it's a brand new facility. Now, how are we going to do that? 
We are going to do fundraisers, <coughs> fundraisers, and uh, we are also going to, we're going to take up an Easter offering this year. Our Easter offering for this church for 2015 is going to be the nursery project offering. We were go our goal is $6,000 for our, our Easter offering from our church. On top of that, we are going to do fundraisers to uh, match that $6,000. By the end of the year, our goal will be to have $12,000 to $15,000 in place so we can pay as we go the nursery remodel. When those kids come in there, when those parents drop off those kids, one of the things that they look at more than they look at the church service and the music service are those kids safe and is it clean? And if it is not safe and it isn't clean, they may, came, they may come to church one service, but they're not going to come back. So that is one of the goals that we have. It is a total remodel for our nursery facility. If our church is growing in that area, we must take a focus on that area and do a focus remodel for our nursery area, okay? Um, one of the things that uh, our policies of our church have to be looked at as well. Um, and one of the things I want to share, this is, going to, this is going to be over some of your heads. Some of you guys could care less about this, but something that we have to talk about. Um, when our budget is tight every, every month and every week and, and every week that we do not have a lot of extra money and we're cutting budgets, and then, and then somebody is using facilities. So what we have decided in our facility use, we are going to have a usage fee for outside ministries using our church. Okay? I do not believe it's our responsibility through our tithes and offerings to have somebody that uses our church that maybe does not go to our church to turn the air conditioning and facilities on for two or three days and charge them 50 bucks. And when it costs the church $500. Would you agree with that? So we are going to start using uh, a, a, a usage fee, not, a, not necessarily a deposit, but a usage fee on the facilities for anyone that does not use it for ministry's sake. Now, if you're part of the church and you have a Bible study, that's what the church is for. The church is to edify the believers and to grow them up. But if you are getting married at the church, I believe it's more important that we take care of our church facilities and we're going to have a usage fee for the facilities for weddings and for uh, activities that are not ministry related. Um, and that's going to go through the church office. Now, why does that go through the church office? I don't know if you know me or well enough, but it goes to the church office because they're going to set my office and they're going to say, well, Bruce, how much does that charge? And my answer is going to be, uh, nothing. I don't care. I, I'll just do it because I love Jesus and I love you, okay? But that's not the answer. The answer is going to be, I don't know. Will you please contact the church office staff and they will give you that proper information. Now, they've been training for me for this for the last six months, okay? It hasn't worked yet, but that is going to be the answer that I'm going to give, that it is going to be a usage of the facility for uh, activities that are not ministry-related. And so that's going to be policies, and we're going to get that through the church, okay? Um, our maintenance, uh, maintenance man has been working here for about 10 years. His name's Joe Garcia. Is Joe here? Uh, he's probably on maintenance. Uh, Joe is retiring on May 31st of this year. Uh, he's been with us. He helped us build the facility. Uh, he's been here. He knows everything about the facility, but he is retiring. So on that weekend, we're going to give him a little send-off for retiring for the church, and, and, uh, and he's done a wonderful job. But uh, we have hired another maintenance engineer that's going to start a week before that. His name is Matt Hope. Matt, would you please stand up? Matt Hope is going to be our new maintenance facilitator. So for the next few months, you can still talk to Joe and gripe at Joe for anything, but after that, you can start gri griping at Matt, okay? So <laughs> Matt's going to be the guy that's going to take care of that. As I boil this down, what does the church look like? We can radically change the direction of the church if we understand the needs that each and every one of us need and try to accomplish. The first thing that when somebody walks in these doors and those that are members of this church the first thing they need to feel is accepted. If we can breed the environment of acceptance, if we can have the environment that somebody walks in those doors or we are in an issue here at the church, whether we look different, act different, 
or maybe we have issues within our life, we can be accepted. Knowing that you are loved for who you really are is the way that our church will grow. Not being judged for what you did, but loved for who you are. The second thing is our identity. Know that you're significant. Who you really are matters. My identity, when I walk in the church, I'm needed, I'm thanked, and I have a calling. So if I can accept people, and I have an identity when I walk in the door, I don't get my identity from the church, but I use my identity within the church. And then the last thing is secure. Knowing that everything is going to be all right. The job of the church is to inspire. The job of the pastor is to motivate. When we are struggling, when we're hurting, it's not the words that I say that's going to challenge your heart. It's the word of God that's being applied. So my job is to give you security, knowing that it may be chaos right now. It may be terrible right now. But the word of God can give you security in the midst of life. That is our hope. That is why people come to church. That's why our families need Jesus. Because in an insecure world, in a hurting, dead world, the only hope they have is Jesus. That's the security. They're not going to get it on CNN News, on Fox Cable. They're going to get it through the power of Jesus Christ. We have to communicate that, that security. And I like this last one. And I think this is the calling upon all of our lives there has to be purpose. What are we here to do? Am I wasting my time? Is this church, is my ministry, are my resources fulfilling the purpose that God has called me to do? Do I have a purpose here? And I tell you, as you watch the staff go across the table, each and every one of them said, volunteers needed, volunteers needed, volunteers needed, volunteers needed. And it hurts me sometimes when somebody says, Bruce, there's just no place for me to serve. I said, what? Where? Get your head out of the sand. Look up. Get your eyes off of yourself. There's places all over the church to serve. And as we talked about yesterday, we are not serving the church we are serving Jesus. We need to understand, I can give of my time, my talent, and my resources because the body of Christ, the family of God, we serve a big God that wants to do great things. And he's called you, and he's equipped you to do something. If all of the body works together and does its part, it brings growth to the body of Christ. But when one person is gone, when one ministry fails, when one thing falls apart and becomes chaotic, then the whole ministry walks around as a lame entity. Our church, over the last 15 years, have had a lot of issues. We've had a lot of problems. We've had great days. We've had sad days. But through it all, through everything that I can say, Every time that we communicate the love and the forgiveness and the attitude of Christ, the church rallies around itself and understands that we are a dysfunctional group of people that have one thing in common, that we have a passion and a love for Christ. And just like any other home, just like your home and just like my home, there's going to be days that's going to be chaotic. There's going to be things that your kids do that you, ah, what are they doing? There's going to be things that are said that you say, why did I say it? But the bottom line is a family and a community. When we get together, we can love, we can talk, we can share, we can pray, and we can be family today. And we know that if we stay together today, tomorrow is going to be okay. We can dream big dreams. We can have great visions. It doesn't do us any good to think about what we could do if we can't do what we need to do. And what we need to do is we need to be a community, a family, a passionate people that have a sacrifice, have, that's willing to sacrifice for the work of God today. Because tomorrow can be beautiful. But you know what? Until we work today, until I have a passion today, until I love my church today, what good is 
next year? What good is five years from now? Because Satan wants no more than to ruin you and to ruin this church. But if we bound together, if we love each other, if we become small, so we become great, when we can pray with each other and love each other and care for each other and get up and talk to people and say, I, you know what, I've been coming to this church for 20 years. Uh, what's your name? Well, I've been a deacon here for 15 years. And you still don't know each other? Okay, break the ice and talk. Just, you know what we need to do? We need to, we need to scratch all membership and all longevity experience of this church and have everybody come in and you've been here for one week everybody's here for one week and just talk to each other like nobody knows everybody and just have a good time. All right, Javier said, give me an amen to that. Because relationships, relationships, relationships. One of the be biggest indwelt need of an individual is to know that he is known, is to know that he matters. And a church, that's what we need to do. We need to be a family. We need to be a church that has a passion for the future but a passion and a love for individuals, the body of Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you for your love to us. And Lord, thank you for the ministries that were talked about and the passion that each one of them have. Thank you for our church, the body of Christ. I thank you for the opportunity that we have to lead, to think about what tomorrow is going to be in store for us, but to think about what we can do today, to love, to encourage, to minister, to think about the body of Christ doing its thing. What a beautiful picture it is. But what sad, how sad it is when the body of Christ starts to stagnate and decline and decay and die. Let us never get to that point. Let us be fresh. Let us understand your work and your calling upon our life. Never leave us. Never leave us to our own life. But always motivate us to honor you and to love you and to serve you like you've never, ever seen another church. Because we want the power and the blessing from Almighty God to be bestowed upon this church, upon our lives, because we're faithful to do what you've called us to do. Let this church be the church that you called it and you want it to be. We would be humbled for your blessing, your anointing, and your calling upon our church. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.